Recently, a viewer on my channel posed an interesting philosophical question to me, and I had to share it with you. The commenter wrote, Will my retroactive jealousy go away if my beliefs don't change? So in today's video, I'm going to try to respond to this question. My name is Zachary Stockhill, and since 2013, I've been helping men and women from all over the world overcome retroactive jealousy and save their relationships. If you'd like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, please visit my website at retroactivejealousy.com. For the people here for the first time, the term retroactive jealousy refers to unwanted intrusive thoughts, often obsessive curiosity, and what I like to call mental movies about a partner's past relationships and or sexual history. You can suffer from one of those things, you can suffer from all of those things, but basically that's retroactive jealousy. So will retroactive jealousy go away if your beliefs don't change? The short and simple answer is, if your beliefs are responsible for your retroactive jealousy, then no, retroactive jealousy probably won't go away entirely if you don't at least challenge some of those beliefs. So as longtime viewers of this channel know, I kind of break retroactive jealousy down into three different categories. So on the one hand, there's relatively minor, what I might call normal, run-of-the-mill retroactive jealousy. This is something, you know, where a lot of people feel like, you know, they don't love hearing about their husband's ex-wife, or, you know, I don't love, I don't need to know details about your relationship with your boyfriend. That kind of thing that many people can relate to. It isn't extreme. It isn't over the top. It's just kind of this minor annoyance that comes up sometimes. A lot of people struggle with that. Number two is what I call values-based retroactive jealousy, where, you know what, maybe there are indeed some glaring red flags in someone's past. Maybe there are indeed some glaring incompatibilities that deserve some thought and attention. Maybe there is something to this, this feeling that isn't entirely irrational, shall we say. In other words, there could be a rational basis for your retroactive jealousy. And finally, type three is something more akin to OCD where it's more or less irrational. In other words, you're thinking about it all the time, you're having intrusive thoughts all the time, but in your calm moments, you know that there's no real concern, there's no real questions about your partner's values. You don't necessarily love your partner's past, you just can't stop thinking about it. So this question about values concerns what I like to call type two retroactive jealousy, more or less values-based retroactive jealousy. And a lot of people write on this channel, they post comments, and they'll say things like, you know, my girlfriend's this horrible person or she did all these terrible things and I can't accept it and I won't accept it. How do I save the relationship? Or, you know, my husband's a serial cheater and I don't trust him at all and he's been like this forever and we don't share the same values. How do I save my relationship? Or another thing, you know, I love my girlfriend so much, but she did all these things that I'm fundamentally not okay with. I can't accept it. I won't accept it. You know, how do I save my relationship? And the short answer is, you can't. If you fundamentally believe that your partner does not share your values, why are you with them? Now, we may have moments early on in dating of questioning whether or not our partner shares our values, right? One of my values is uh, being prompt. <laughs> I'm kind of obsessive that way, right? If I have a call that starts at 10 a.m., I am on that call ready to go at 10 a.m. If I say I'm meeting you for a coffee at you know, 11 a.m., I'm there probably at 10 minutes to 11. I'm that kind of guy. I really value, you know, being on time. Now, if I'm dating a woman and she's habitually late, this may not be worth breaking up over, but in my world, it's definitely worthy of a conversation <laughs> because I know this is gonna annoy me every single time we get together and that could have disastrous consequences for the relationship because I'm that type of guy. Maybe she should go find someone who's kind of late, a little bit flaky, <laughs> like that's great. Go find that. I'm, I'm happy for you, genuinely. Because again, I think dating should be primarily about determining fit. I'm not trying to determine if this woman who shows up late all the time is a good or a bad person. I'm just trying to determine whether or not she would fit in with me and my lifestyle and my goals and crucially, my values. But at the same time, let's say the habitually late woman, if she makes no effort to change that, to try to you know, make my life a little bit easier, and maybe I can relax a little bit with being on time a little bit, but if we don't share big picture values like honesty and you know, let's say that she's you know, habitually uh, cheating on people and she doesn't really take any ownership or accountability for that, things like that that are big values questions, it's not going to work. I don't care how charming she is, I don't care how great our intellectual connection is, I don't care how great our sexual connection is, I don't care how pretty she is, I don't care how, she, how nice she is to me. The values questions matter. 
They matter. They keep people together over difficult periods and they also cause people to break up. So all this is to say, if you have serious questions about your partner's values, that's valid. And you know what? In certain cases, it's worth walking away if you determine with a clear head, that's also very important, with a clear head, not in a moment when you're feeling emotional, when you're feeling irrational, when you're just kind of lashing out. But if you do the work, if you talk to friends and family, if you hire a good therapist or a good coach, someone like me, whatever, if you do the work and you come to the determination with a clear head that your partner doesn't share your values, you are in all likelihood saving that person and yourself a lot of wasted time, energy, pain, drama, if you walk away as soon as possible. So that person can go find someone who shares their values and so you can find someone who shares yours. All of that out of the way. Another very important question. This kind of, you know, it's kind of the counterweight to what I was just talking about. Are your values working for you? I am often shocked by how many people de are determined to live true to values that are making them miserable, that are preventing them from having a great relationship, that are just holding them back in all areas of life, right? And again, I'm not saying what your values should be. I'm not saying you have to take on my values. Absolutely not. I'm a libertarian. You do you. I do me. Everybody wins. We're all good. But if your values are making you miserable, if your values are saying that basically everyone you date is not on your level and you're so much above them and whatever, if your values are keeping you alienated from other people, if they're keeping you up at night because you're so miserable and torn and tortured and stuff, sometimes it's worth questioning your values. I'm not saying you need to abandon them necessarily. I'm not saying that you should abandon all of your values, but I think as we enter adulthood, it can be good to question our values, to, to kind of continually think about them and consider them, and crucially decide whether or not they're working for us. As an example, you know, one of my values, like let's go back to the, <laughs> the silly thing about me being on time. It's working for me. You know, it makes me more productive. It, it benefits my relationships with other people. Like that's a good one. That, I'm going to keep that hopefully for the rest of my life. I like that value. That's good for me. But uh, one value maybe that, that didn't work so well. I know one. I think in my younger years, I held on to grudges for way longer than I should. One of my values is, you know, you, you, tr you cross me once or you do something bad to me once, that's it, you're done, you're cut from the team, right? And as I've gotten older and mellowed just a little bit, you know, to be honest, forgiveness is still something I'm working on. I'm not great at forgiveness. But I've let go of that value of being so incredibly harsh and brutal with people when they do anything to upset me. Because I've, I've you know, messed up some friendships over that, I've, I've alienated some people from my life, and it's really benefited me, particularly over the past 15 years or so, to let that go a little bit, to get a little bit more mellow. It's benefited me. This new uh, value that I have of being a little more forgiving has benefited my life tremendously. So ask yourself which of your values are working for you and which of them maybe aren't. And then make good decisions based on that. Because I think it'd be a real waste of a life to remain wedded to values that aren't working for you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you benefited from this video today, I would value it if you please click the like button below. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think. I'd love to hear about your values if you want to share. And while you're at it, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel to be notified of new videos moving forward. Thanks again, and we'll talk again soon.